In this video, I will show you how to use path explorations in Google Analytics 4 and see how visitors navigate your website. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to the Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with GA4, then consider subscribing to this channel. There are various exploration techniques available in Google Analytics 4, and path exploration is one of them. It allows you to see the flow of how visitors navigate your website or in what order do they complete particular events. This feature has definitely some improvements compared to the previous versions of Google Analytics. Let's take a look. To get started, go to Explore in the left sidebar of Google Analytics 4. Then you can either select Path Exploration or you can click blank. In this case, I will select Path Exploration. The interface of Explorations consists of three parts. One is Variables. This is where you have your segments, dimensions, and metrics that are going to be used in Exploration. Then we have Tab Settings, and these are directly responsible for what you see right here. For example, if you want to analyze data not of all visitors, but only of a particular segment, for example, US traffic, you can drag this segment right here. And then Path Exploration will show you the numbers only of that particular segment. Then we have Note Type. This section is responsible for what you see right here in this dropdown. Unfortunately, at this moment, you cannot control what you see right here. There are only three dimensions supported that are event name, page title, and screen name, page title, and screen class. I really wish that there was another dimension right here, which is page path, but currently that is not available. Hopefully, at some point in the future, Google Analytics 4 will add it. Then we have the unique notes only section, but I will talk about this a bit later. Then we have a breakdown, but this will also be covered later, and then values. Here in the values, you can select from one of three metrics, at least right now when I'm recording this video. You can display either event count right here, so this metric is responsible for these numbers, or you can add here active users or total users. So if you want to see, let's say, total users, you can then drag this on top of event count, and then the numbers will change. Now let me go back to the event count metric. And let me explain what does this option mean. But to do that, it would be easier to show an example. Here we have a path exploration. And the first event is session start. Then the next one after that is page view. And then after that, we have another event with page view. So if this option is disabled, two consecutive nodes in the same analysis might be the same. For example, here we have people who started a session, then they made a page view, and then they made another page view. And if we take a look at the values, these are the same events, page view and page view. And since this option is disabled, we see two consecutive nodes that have the same value. But if I enabled this option, then two consecutive nodes could not have the same value. Let me show you. Now I will enable this. And now I see only unique values. So we have one event here, then we have page view. And after the page view, the next node does not have a page view. Now, if I clicked right here, we can still see the page view right here. So to sum up, this option is responsible for two consecutive nodes and the values in one node and another cannot be the same. Or if you hover your mouse here, you will see that two identical nodes cannot go one after another. Then let's take a look at the breakdown. So I can click here and I can select from dimensions that are included right here. So let's take a look at the device category. And once you select this, you can then hover your mouse on that particular node and then you can see the breakdown based on the device category. And the filter section, you can narrow down and analyze only a subset of data. It is a bit similar to the segment, but segment allows you to create more complex segments, for example, and more complex rules while filters allow you to add something very quickly. For example, you can click here and decide that you just want to see the traffic from a country that exactly matches United States, and then click Apply. If you don't want to see the event names, you can switch to page titles. This is useful if page titles on your website are fairly descriptive. But again, as I've said, I would really like if there was a fourth option, which is called page path, or maybe the entire page URL would also be useful. So here we see that the session starts on the homepage, then I can click here, 
So here I see that the session started and then it starts on homepage. If I click here, we have some technical issues. So something in the setup of this website is not working properly. But if we ignore this, then we can see other pages where people are going from the homepage. If I don't want to see this not set in the reports, I could do the right click, then exclude node, and then from all paths. This will exclude the not set from everywhere. And that filter will be added in the note filters section. If you did some change in the exploration and you want to undo it, you can do that by clicking this undo button. Another feature which is very useful in my opinion, and that was not available in flow reports of Google Analytics 3, and that is reverse pathing. So what does it mean is that you can start your exploration not from the beginning of the journey, but actually from the ending point. Let me show you. When you start creating a path exploration, you will need to click start over right here. And then you can select either you want to start from the starting point or from the ending point. And in this case, let's say that I want to check what is happening here. I will click this and then I can decide whether I want to start from a particular page title or event name. Let's say that I want to see what is happening before the purchase because I know that this property is tracking e-commerce data and purchases as well. So I will click event name and then I have to select what kind of event. I can either load more or use the search feature and then enter purchase. Keep in mind that purchase event is not automatically tracked by Google Analytics 4. You have to implement this setup and explicitly send that purchase information to Google Analytics 4. In my Google Tech Manager courses, I give many more technical details about it. So if you want to learn more, take a look at the description of this video. Now I will select purchase and then I can go backwards and see what was done. I can switch from event name to page title. When you are working with website data, it does not matter which one do you choose from these because they will return the same page title. Now let's go back one step more then one step more and then you can see what people were doing before they made a purchase. So some of them visited shopping cart but some of them visited login so it means that some people are purchasing while being logged in in their accounts and so on. So by clicking on every node you can go up to 10 steps back or in other words you can have up to 10 columns right here. The same applies to the exploration where you have a starting point. And now let's take a look at one practical example. I recorded it in 2021 but it was so good that I decided to reuse it in this video as well. Keep in mind that you will notice some slight differences in the interface of Google Analytics 4, but this should not impact your overall learning experience. So this example comes from the official Google Merchandise Store. In that GE property, they track an event called errors. So I decided to use path exploration and check what visitors were doing before that error occurred and what could be done to fix it afterwards. So I will click right here, enter event name, and then I will try to use the search and enter errors. And here is the event. Now here I see the count of error events. In fact, let's narrow down that date range to something more recent, for example, last several days. And we see that right before the error, another event occurs, which is page view. Now the reason why their numbers are very similar is because this event, which is errors, are tracking page not found errors, or in other words, 404 errors. So it's natural that every time a page view occurs, the 404 error is also tracked. So we can ignore this kind of event. Now let's click once again and go backwards. And then we see another page view. Now this page view occurred before that 404 error occurred. So it means that somewhere on this page, we have some broken link or maybe several broken links that redirect visitors to a page that is unavailable. Now, how can we identify what was the previous page on which that broken link exists? That can be done in several ways. One of them could be by switching from event name to page title. And here we say that the page title is page unavailable. So this is the title of that error page. Now let's go back one step backwards. And then we will see that most of the page views that occur before the 404 error are coming from the home page. Now, another question that you might have is on which exact pages does this 404 or page unavailable error occur? And this is the place where I wish we had page path as a dimension right here, but right now we cannot use it. We don't have it right here. 
So the other way could be to use the breakdown dimension. So here we could include the page path dimension and we can do that by clicking on dimensions right here so that we include that dimension in the variables tab. So I click on the plus icon and then I look for page path, which is here. And then I click apply. And now I can drag this dimension to the breakdown section right here. And now if I hover my mouse on this section, you will see some of the most popular URLs where that page not found error occurred. Now we see that there are some style errors right here because numbers and text values are kind of overlapping. So I hope that this bug will be fixed in the future. But right now let's focus on the first page path with the query string. So what we see right now is that on this shop by brand and Google Chrome Dino page, the 404 error occurs and most of the visitors are landing on this page from the home page. So we need to find that URL on the home page that is broken. And we can do that by going to the merchandise store, clicking on the logo and going to the home page. And then I will do the right click on the background, inspect, and here I will click Control F. If you're on a Mac, you can click Command F, and this will enable the search field right here. And here I will enter part of the URL that was visible right here in the report. So once I do that, I will see that there is one element that contains that URL. And if I switch to the sidebar and check what kind of element is it, so I hover my mouse on this highlighted element. And it looks like this button has a broken link. So let's check. Let's go back. Yep, this is the link. So now if I click on shop now, and if I get that page unavailable error, it looks like I have identified the problem that a developer of this website should fix. So let's click shop now we are redirected and boom, like this is actually happening on the live website. So page unavailable. And one of the buttons in carousel is redirecting to a 404 error. And I was able to identify that thanks to path analysis in Google Analytics 4. And that is how you can use exploration reports in Google Analytics 4. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.